It has an astonishing number of freshwater lakes, it didn't have its own constitution until 1982, and one of its cities is the most multicultural in the world. These are just three of the things that you're going to learn about Canada. Despite being an important and beautiful country in its own right, Canada has long lived in the shadow of the United States. Some people say it's the 51st state. Some people say it's America's hat. Some people say we're just the boring version of Americans. But despite the superficially similar lifestyle and similar accent when speaking English, Canada has its own distinct history, identity, and set of values that makes it different from the US. And as the second largest country in the world, after Russia, it's a vast country full of geographic and cultural diversity. Canada is comprised of 10 provinces and 3 territories. The 10 provinces are British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, Quebec, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, and Newfoundland and Labrador. Similar to the provinces, but located to the north of them, lie the territories. Listed from west to east, there's the Yukon, the Northwest Territories, and Nunavut. They don't have full provincial status, mostly because of the small number of people living there. Canada has an estimated population of just over 38 million. Ethnically, the majority of its citizens are white European, at about 73% according to the 2016 census. Though that percentage has been steadily declining, and especially in the cities, visible minorities make up a large part of the population, including people of East Asian, South Asian, and African origins, among others. And of course there are Canada's indigenous people, the First Nations, of which there are 634 distinct recognized groups, the Métis and the Inuit. They make up around 5% of Canada's population. Indigenous people had already lived in Canada for thousands of years by the time European explorers began to arrive. Beginning in the late 15th century, English and French explorers began making voyages to North America, claiming lands for their countries, searching for valuable resources, especially beaver pelts and other animal furs, and establishing trading posts and settlements. Canada was originally the name of a French colony within the larger colonial territory of New France. The name Canada was based on the Iroquois word Canada, which means village or settlement, but that French explorer Jacques Cartier thought was the name of the entire area. Of course the English and the French, as well as other colonial powers, were in competition to colonize these territories. France was forced to give up its territory in North America to the British in 1763, after it lost the French and Indian War, also known as the Seven Years' War, and the French colony of Canada became the British province of Quebec. The British province was split into mostly English-speaking Upper Canada, the precursor of the province of Ontario, and mostly French-speaking Lower Canada, the precursor of the province of Quebec. This is why Canada is officially bilingual today, and today Quebec is still very much a distinct society within Canada. Many Quebecois see it as the continuation of the original French colony, and worthy of being a separate country. There have actually been two referendums on whether Quebec should separate from Canada and become an independent country. In the most recent one, in 1995, only 50.58% of Quebecers voted in favour of staying part of Canada. If that number had dipped below 50%, Canada might have been split in two. Of course, Quebec and Ontario aren't the only provinces in Canada. In 1867, Canada became a self-governing dominion of the British Empire, consisting of the provinces of Ontario, Quebec, New Brunswick, and Nova Scotia, uniting former colonies. The forefathers of Canada decided to unite the colonies because they feared being taken over by the Americans, who had revolted against the British and become independent in the previous century. Soon after becoming a country, Canada purchased Rupert's Land, a massive region that had previously been privately owned by the Hudson's Bay Company. Rupert's Land added about 3.9 million square kilometers to the territory of Canada. Other British colonies later joined Canada and became additional provinces. In contrast to the USA, Canada wasn't born out of revolution against the British, but rather cooperation with the British. Canada was not formally recognized by Britain as independent until 1931, and it didn't have its own constitution until 1982. And even today, Queen Elizabeth's face is still on our money. Since the formation of Canada, its capital city has been Ottawa, Ontario. Queen Victoria chose Ottawa because it lies on the border between Ontario and Quebec, the two main provinces at the time, and because it had both Anglophone and Francophone communities. 
But the largest city in Canada is Toronto, with a population of over 2.7 million people in the city proper, and over 6.4 million in the Greater Toronto Area. It has been called the most multicultural city in the world, with more than 51% of its population being born outside of Canada. Canada, in particular its cities, is very cosmopolitan as a result of its openness to immigration. Its culture is best viewed as a mosaic of French, English, and Indigenous cultures, as well as the cultures brought to Canada by the continuous arrival of immigrants from around the world. The exact ethnic mix depends on the place, with Vancouver having a large population of East Asian origin for example, but not as many people of Middle Eastern or Caribbean background as Toronto. No matter where they're from, most immigrants have to travel a long distance to reach Canada, since there aren't very many countries nearby. Canada is located in the northern portion of North America, to the north of the continental United States, and southwest of Greenland. As I mentioned earlier, it's the second largest country in the world. In fact, Canada is so large that the country spans six time zones. Canada is just over 15 and a half times the size of France. But despite this large size, Canada is very sparsely populated, with a population of only 38 million in 2021. That's less than 12% of the USA's population, which is around 330 million. Most Canadians live within 150 kilometers of the border with the United States. However, in order to stake a clearer claim to Canada's Arctic regions and their potential resources, the Canadian government is trying to entice more people to live further north. This has not proven easy, with temperatures as low as minus 70 degrees Celsius in the territory of Nunavut, it's understandable why few Canadians want to live up north. Those temperatures are even lower than the average temperature of Mars, which happens to be around minus 60 degrees Celsius. Canada's official motto is Amari Usque Ad Mare, which is Latin for from sea to sea, referring to the Pacific Ocean in the west to the Atlantic Ocean in the east. But of course there's also the Arctic Ocean to the north, so maybe the motto ought to be from sea to sea to sea. If you look west towards the Pacific Ocean, you'll notice that western Canada is quite mountainous, as it's dominated by the Western Cordillera mountain system. Maybe you've heard of the Rocky Mountains, which start near British Columbia's border with the Yukon and stretch all the way down to New Mexico and the United States. Some of the most iconic scenery in all of Canada can be found nestled among its peaks. Banff National Park in particular is known for its natural treasures. Sightseers and winter sports enthusiasts travel here from all over the world to enjoy the stunning environment. But the highest mountain in the Western Cordillera, and in all of Canada, is Mount Logan, which is located in Yukon. If you look east towards the Atlantic Ocean, you'll notice another mountain range, the Appalachian Mountains, which extend from Newfoundland and Labrador down to central Alabama. Due to the process of erosion, the Appalachian Mountains have shrunk considerably over time. 460 million years ago, they were as high and rugged as the Alps, though their highest peak is now less than half as high as the highest peak in the Rockies. There's another mountain system in the far north, the Arctic Cordillera. It stretches from Ellesmere Island, Canada's most northern point, all the way down to northern Labrador. The landscape is dominated by granite and volcanic mountain peaks, giant glaciers, and deep fjords. Let's move from north back down to the south, where we find the longest international border in the world. Canada's border with the USA is 8,890 kilometers long. It's also the longest undefended border in the world. That doesn't mean you can just walk across the border freely, but it means that the military doesn't defend the border. And let's be honest, there wouldn't be much point in Canada's military trying to defend that border. The western half of the border runs along the 49th parallel, but the eastern half is defined partially by the Great Lakes. The five Great Lakes are notable for their incredible size. They're sometimes referred to as inland seas, rather than lakes. Together they contain 21% of the world's fresh water by volume, and 22-23% to based on surface area. The Great Lakes are only partially located within Canada, of course, since the border runs through them. But with 563 lakes that are over 100 square kilometers each, Canada has more freshwater lakes than any other country in the world. If we count all lakes of any size, there are over 2 million of them. Owing to its vast size, Canada is home to many species of animal, including polar bears, grizzly bears, and black bears, Canada geese, deer, caribou, and elk, and of course, moose, the largest member of the deer family, which commonly weighs over 650 kilograms and is over 2 meters tall at the shoulder. That doesn't include its head, neck, and antlers. Then there are beavers, which are a national symbol of Canada. Beavers sure are cute, but they're also vicious little demons, and they can cause serious injuries with their teeth. So if you see one, rather than trying to take selfies with it, just get out of there. 
It's not a freaking quokka, okay? Canada is also well known for some of its foods, like maple syrup, Nanaimo bars, and poutine. Especially near the coasts, smoked salmon is also a popular meal of choice. Canada officially has two national sports, ice hockey and lacrosse, but a lot more people are into ice hockey. With 22 Olympic medals in hockey, including 13 gold medals, Canada dominates this sport in the Olympics more than any other country. Canada has an advanced economy, which is the 10th largest in the world, despite Canada's relatively small population. The exportation of natural resources is an important contributor to Canada's economic health. Oil, wood, and agricultural products are often produced for foreign markets. In fact, Canada has the third largest oil reserves in the world, after Venezuela and Saudi Arabia. On top of that, because of the huge quantity of agricultural goods they produce, some people have called Canada's prairies the breadbasket of the world. There's so much more we could say about Canada because it's such a massive and diverse country, but hopefully this brief introduction gave you a sense of what makes Canada Canada, its history as a dual French and English colonial society built in a land inhabited by indigenous people, followed by successive waves of immigration from around the world, and also its spectacular and vast natural landscapes, and of course, the cold. Now over to you. What's something you learned about Canada from this video? And for Canadians, what else do you want other people to know about your country? Leave your comments down below. Do you want to see this channel's videos before anyone else? Become a member of this channel and you'll see videos one week early and completely ad-free, with no ads or promos. Click the join button next to the subscribe button for more information. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to hit the like button and have a nice day.